The Pentecostal strands have merged those, or those are well integrated. So the operating system being kind of like the underlying spirituality and theology, and then the interface is the technique of how to do it. The Protestant how-to books tend to be almost just interface without operating system. So the biblical spirituality, the biblical interpretation, the sense that this is a gift from God tends not to be expressed. The most interesting example of, of that divorce that I found, I was interviewing Mary Cyphers. Anybody recognize her name? I mean, she's written a lot of the United Methodist kind of supplemental worship resources. She was an early adopter, United Methodist, up in the Pacific Northwest, Washington State, I think it was. So she started implementing contemporary worship services mid to late 90s. And she, I, I asked her how she did it. She said, well, I do this and I do this. But when it came time to hire the musician, I would never hire a Methodist musician. Why wouldn't you hire it? She said, they didn't get it. You know, for the reflection of what she was saying, they did not understand the operating system. Mm -hmm. yeah. This piety mm -hmm. that you had to linger in the music, you use the music to enter into the presence of God. They just, the Methodist musicians she, you know, had access to just saw it as, okay, so you want me to play this song rather than this song, mm -hmm. use this instrument rather than this instrument. Yeah. Yeah. Can, you, can you do your illustration again between the operating system and the interface? You said charismatic, so which way is the process? Charismatics, all the Pentecostals, always had a merger of the operating system and the interface. The main lines, and I think this would apply to some mainline evangelicals too, like Baptists, tended to see this essentially as adoption of a style, the interface without adoption of the operating system. I mean, when I talk about the Anaheim Vineyard example in just a little bit, um, their original worship leader, Carl Tuttle, was helped because he was coming from a Quaker background. So I asked Carl, I said, um, tell me about your rehearsal practices. He said, what rehearsal practices? Mm -hmm. I said, tell me how you constructed a worship set. Okay. This was, was easy. He said, I got there with my guitar, and I prayed, and whatever first song the Spirit told me to do, that's where we started. Hmm. And then, and here's the key, he's actively discerning the Spirit's movement through the entire set. That's what Mary Cyphers couldn't find in the Methodist musicians. And the ability to assess what was happening and to make those spur of the moment, subtle musical shifts to accentuate or extend what was happening. I mean, no more. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. You know, and that's probably spread over to mainline musicians today just because the phenomenon is so widespread. But when she was early adopting in the mid to late 1990s, she had to go to Pentecostal circles to find the musicians that she wanted.